Okay, and here in a rainforest, the temperate rainforest on Tasmania's uh, southeast coast, uh, we're treated to a massive Dicksonia, a massive tree fern. Easily almost four feet in diameter at the base, covered in filmy ferns, Hymenophilaceae. Uh, there's actually an Atherosperma growing out of it epiphytically, Atherospermataceae, Laurales, avocado order. Uh, and this thing is probably, I mean, you can see it's just massive. Look at the diversity of, of mosses, liverworts, ferns, lichens. There's lichens growing on the filmy ferns, the dead ones. You know, I've seen, this is, this is like what, the quintessential uh, office building is going for when they try to do one of these installations. But of course, you know, <laughs> they can never pull it off. This is the real life thing. Yeah, I, can't, I guess it's sandstone. Seems like maybe it's metamorphous sandstone. I didn't look at a geologic map before I came out here, so I can't, I can't tell you for sure. But look, there's, it's not all even layers. It looks like there's some unconformities here. You know, I give it the you know the office parks. They're trying to make a soothing place for their employees. No, no one uses the word workers or employees anymore. They say team members, which is kind of demeaning. But uh, you know, they're trying to create a, a safe, uh, a soothing environment to take away from the fact that you work in an otherwise miserable place. I, I think that's I think that's nice. And this this is actually close due to the deterioration of the chicken wire in a boardwalk and deterioration of the actual boardwalk itself. So we're not supposed to be here, but I just want to I just want to comment. I like what they did with the lag. Okay, now it wasn't intentional; it just fell. But still, you could pretend they did that nice thing. It was an intent. You could pretend it was intentional. Looks very nice ambiance. That's certainly one of the largest atherosperma that I've seen yet. Look at the bark texture. Oh, bubbly. Oh, papillaceous. That's kind of odd. So both these, both these, both this, the, the leaves on that branch and the leaves on this branch are from the same plant. It's atherosperma. You can see, see the dentation on the leaves right there. But those leaves have lost their dentation because that kind of threw me off. We were looking at a tree just off the road and it had opposite leaves but no dentation on the margin. Smelled it, smelled like atherosperma, but, uh, you know. All those members of Laurelis, most of them have really weird volatile compounds in the leaves. The southern sassafras does have saffron in it. Look at that. Ferns growing on ferns. Okay, we got a species of Asplenium growing on one of the tree ferns, the Dicksonias. There's another tree fern uh, on Tasmania. The Cyathea is the genus. They're both in the uh, Cyathea alleys. Cyathea and this one, Dicksonia, but Cyathea tends to be much larger. I saw a Cyathea in New Caledonia that was like 80 feet tall, easily. Anyway, looking at the sori here on, uh, on the Asplenum, you can see it's a little slit, which is a, a trademark of many of the species in the genus uh, Asplenium. They tend to have those little slit, uh, slit sori. Slitsori.com. All these fucking, all these, uh, <laughs> all these all these fake websites I make up, you know, I, <laughs> someone's got to get some of them. Oh, hey, buddy. You're not going to find the blood meal in the, in the console. Okay? Let's go. Come on. Time to get out. Let's go. Get out. Get out. Let's go. Let's go. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Let's go. Come on. No terrestrial leech. Come on. Here we go. The genus here is Lomatia, and uh, the flowers, which is uh, it's in Proteaceae, the flowers tend to look a lot like Grevillea flowers. You can see they've got that little curled bud coming out. That's actually the pollen presenter, which is ensconced in the four valvate tepals. And then as it matures, those four valvate tepals peel back, reveal the pollen presenter, which is presenting pollen. Uh, and then that pollen presenter later on uh, becomes receptive, becomes a stigmatic there's quite a few species of lamacia in tasmania uh, the rarest one uh, lamacia tasmanica is actually no longer sexually sexually reproductive it's just a huge colony of all the same clone so it'll never produce seeds probably just the relic from the pleistocene 
actually probably quite quite a bit older, quite a bit older than that. But you can see right there, there's the uh, pollen presenter, and you can actually see in the back there an anther, which is uh, adnate that is fused to uh, to that uh, tepal, the distal end of that tepal. Now, as you could see, we're standing on what's known as tessellated pavement. It's essentially siltstone that was deposited in a low-lying basin and then later fractured along joints uh, by the, uh, the gentle and gradual shifting of the Earth's crust. And then as those joints were made, they were later filled in with salt crystals, etc. But it creates a very a wonderful texture here uh, on the edge of uh, the ocean. Look at that, that's a nice patina. You got the nice, uh, the nice green from the algae. You got the uh, different joints and fractures in a rock, okay? I wonder if this is somebody's screensaver somewhere. I could see that, you know, right when you open windows before it fails, you know, and, and automatically updates in the middle of an important project. You know, a friend of mine who is a hacker you know, he was putting Linux on my computer once. I said, is this going to give me a virus? He said, you already have a virus on your computer. Windows is a virus. But this could be, maybe Windows used this as a screensaver. That could be. It's very beautiful. I could see why. Here we go. Another member of Santa Lacy. And you could see those uh, swollen petioles, or swollen uh, pedicels, excuse me. Turning red, holding the fruit. The, the fruit is just a dull green, and that pedicel turns to a very conspicuous red. I think like a little bait berry, edible bait berry for birds and mammals that will disperse it. Exocarpos is the genus here. So, partially parasitic, uh, but it can also obviously uh, photosynthesize on its own too. Probably tapping into the ukes. Okay, here we are standing above a dangerous precipice on a cliff looking over uh, some beautiful ocean water and at the ravine over there is where we're headed to actually to show you the uh, other species of tree fern that occurs on the island of Tasmania okay nowhere near as ubiquitous as Dicksonia but they're in the same order see just layer after layer of sedimentary rock see just layer after layer of Permian sedimentary rock so 300 million year old rock. Actually, I guess these are a little bit younger than Permian because the tessellated pavement down there is Permian. So the layers above it would be uh, lacking in unconformity. The layers above it would be uh, much younger. Only only minor changes in depositional environment, such as that uh, that white that one white layer. You can see that, and not much deformation either. Now, descending into said baggy ravine, we do indeed see tree ferns, but these appear at first glance to perhaps just be Dicksonia. Cyanthia tend to be a lot taller and uh, more inaccessible. Look at the new frond unfurling. How about that? So we've gone further up the gully, but these all just appear to be Dicksonias. So these are all Dicksonia, but right here, you actually got a dead Cyathe, and you can see how it compares. It's so much, because you're not going to get much difference out of leaves unless you hold them next to each other, but you can see how skinny this thing is. It goes up another 20 or 30 feet, but it's dead, so we got to find a live one. You know, this this really harkens me back to the Carboniferous. Oh, I think you see some up there. Really harkens me back to the Carboniferous, you know? All those fossils you'd find at places like Mason Creek. Oh, fuck. You know? The precursors to today's coal seams. There we go. There's the Cyathea for you. See how small that is compared to the Dicksonia? A lot of you are probably just like, what the fuck is he talking about? They look the same. But uh, I guess compare, let's see if you compare the leaves. So this is Dicksonia. This is Cyathea Cunninghamii. Oh yeah, okay. You could see that. You could see that a little bit, huh? A difference in the uh, leaflet architecture. See that? You could see that. See, I don't sound like so much of a jackass. Now. I mean, I still probably a little bit, but you know, you could obviously see the differences. The nuance in leaves here. All right, and then of course, when you look at a full-grown specimen, boom, there you go. 
but there's not that many. And some of them look kind of sick. <laughs> there's, Jesus. It's like maybe, was that one over there? Some bird is up, so you hear that? Okay, anyway, there we go. Let's compare sporophylls. There you go. Nice, nice comparison of sporophylls. Dixonia on the right, Cyathea on the left. You can see this, the, uh, the sori on the uh, Cyathea are kind of in the center of the leaf, and they're on the margins of the leaflets uh, on the Dixonia. See that? They're at different stages of development, but that's a good comparison. If the nuances in the leaflets themselves is not enough, and it's really not. They do look a, a lot alike. Both uh, in the same order, and both uh, very old lineages. So there you go, Dixonia and Cyathea. Cyathea Cunninghamii. What the shit? What is, what is going on up there? Okay, anyway. I mean, and then of course Cyathea is just much, much skinnier. You know, I'm uh, starting to get over this. These, all these uh, bryophytes are kind of nice, but I'm starting to get a little tired of this. I just pulled like three tiny leeches off me. You know, they're just trying to make it in the world. I get it, but uh, fuck all. It's just a bunch of brambles. It's hard to get through. Oh yeah, there we go. So we made it through. We made it through over there. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice specimen. You can see it's upwards of. Uh, I don't know, 40 feet tall. Jesus Christ. <laughs> just, just. So that's the big difference between those uh, subtle nuances and uh, in leaflet. It's much, it's a much thinner plant. It's a much thinner trunk and a much taller plant when, uh, when adult. When fully mature. God, what a clusterfuck to get to. It, it, thinks, it seems like they tend to be more tropical. We're not very tropical here. It's just, you know, climate of the Pacific Northwest. Temperate rainforest. Whole lot of Dixonia and so few Cyathea. Yeah, see, so those are all, those are all mostly Dixonia. So Dixonia just tends to outcompete the Cyathea, which is up there. But remember, they're, they got a bang on the ground. You know when they're in a gamito fight, they got a bang in a gamito fight. So that you know that makes it a little bit trickier. Dixonia's got a monopoly on us. It's apparently more ecologically adapted to this climate and, and environment, and probably these temperatures and rainfall regimes. You know, come to think of it, I don't even know what a Cyathea gamito fight looks like. Just like a little. How big is the little green dish? How big is the little green dish that the sperm and egg were made on, you know? To produce a diploid, uh, a diploid plant. Anyway, uh, nice uh, vestigial population of that tree fern. That's all I got for you this afternoon. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.